I'm in Banco Non on the rooftop here at the Mikar Cafe and Bistro. Now, I don't normally dig the Ponzi cafes or bistros, as you know, but this is far from one of those. In fact, you've got great views over Tombury and you're within 10 metres of the platforms at the MRT at Banco Non. So you can see everyone coming and going and see trains leaving and departing. If that's your thing, you get a great view, actually. Anyway, I wanted to touch on a topic that people have been sending me emails about and that is the topic of weed. Am I going to do a video on legalization of cannabis here in Thailand? The answer to that is no, because there's nothing really more to tell that hasn't already been done by the media and more importantly in other YouTube videos. So I suggest you check those videos out. Anyway, let's get down to ground level and get this video started. Welcome to Disappearing Bangkok. And if I don't hurry up and finish this dialogue sketch, it'll all evaporate before our very eyes. I keep forgetting what I'm supposed to be saying. Anyway, we're in the Tombury district of Bangkok, that's right. And this is an area about to undergo a huge redevelopment and regeneration over the next five years. Two new rail lines, a new shopping mall, a new extension to Sirarat Hospital, a new market, and of course, lots of condos thrown in for good measure. And we're gonna start right here, next to Bang Khun Non MRT station. So we're going to kick off with a bit of good old fashioned track walking. Not the kind of track walking I used to do as a kid in London when I was a graffiti artist, but this is not dissimilar to that. We're going to head towards Tombury and along the way we're going to see a few railway line side communities that have been living here for well over 50 or 60 years. And with all this redevelopment that's going to be taking place, they could may well disappear completely or be kicked off the land. Now I did a bit of research on this and it depends on how long they've been squatting on the land then they get eligible for social housing projects so maybe this redevelopment could be a blessing in disguise for them because they get to move into proper housing with more space and of course proper sanitation facilities so that's no bad thing at all. A lot of people take pictures of messy wires around Bangkok and I've seen a very imaginative way that this jasmine plant here has retaken its territory around the cable and it's very artistic. Probably wildlife living in that, bats, squirrels maybe, even a snake. So maybe we should encourage more planting of jasmine plants and then all the messy cables around Thailand will eventually look like that. Well, from the research I've been doing, this line looks like it's going to be disappearing completely to make way for the brand new SRT light red line extension, which will run from Taling Chan to Sirarat Hospital. And below ground, you're going to have the brand new MRT orange line trains from Bang Khun Non through Sirarat Hospital and eventually to Thailand Cultural Center and on to Minbury. I got asked recently about the legalization of weed in Thailand. I got a couple of emails. The first one said, can you buy king size Rizla here in Thailand? And if I remember rightly, I used to have to go to Foodland in Ramkam Heng to get king size Rizla 20 years ago. There's probably a lot more places you can get papers. I'm not sure about Rizla itself. Anyway, the other question was, can I walk down the street now blazing a big fat spliff? And I thought, well, the kind of people who would walk around the streets blazing big fat spliffs and not the kind of people who really would be helping at all because I always thought weed was something you smoked when you wanted to relax and chill out you know in the privacy of your own home more like so I think weed even though it doesn't smell as bad as cigarettes should definitely not be smoked walking down the streets. I remember years ago I was painting my living room back in England and it was early in the morning when I started and I just couldn't muster up the enthusiasm to do it. I was doing all the edging with the paint, paintbrush and I just couldn't get it straight. I kept putting paint on the ceiling by mistake 
Anyway, I thought, right, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to have a spliff. I smoked half of it, left it in the ashtray, and then, you know, half an hour later, I restarted the painting. I was doing perfectly straight lines, freehand, no rulers, no masking tape. Brilliant. And I knocked out the whole living room in the space of four hours. Three coats of paint on the walls, everything. I even got started on the kitchen, and I didn't finish until about midnight that night without eating nothing. I was just going and going. You know, real motivation that weed can give you. And that is a positive side of it because the creative side can come out. And that is one part of it that a lot of people who are dead against the legalization of weed overlook, especially the mainstream media here in Thailand. Everything is like horror stories about weed. You know, it can give you this, it can give you that. You know, no worse than cigarettes or alcohol, which are probably the worst two of the lot, but they're completely legal and fully socially accepted too. But I'm not gonna rant on about that. This is where the line goes over the Klong Wat Tong Canal. And one of the tracks over the bridge has been completely abandoned. In fact, the whole railway infrastructure around here is crumbling before our very eyes. And it's no wonder that it's eventually gonna be replaced. And there's a train coming actually now to rumble over the bridge. I'm definitely not walking across that because the girders, there's a huge gap between them. I'm scared of heights and I'll probably fall into the water. That canal runs into the Bangkok Noi Canal that way. And I'm not sure about that way. I might go and have a look. And the approach to Tombury Station isn't that far away. In the old days, it went as far as Bangkok Noi Railway Station, right on the river. And obviously that's not the case now. And by the way, if you want to get to the bridge over the River Kwai or Talang Chan Floating Market, this is where you would get the train from, Tombury Railway Station, which we'll get to in a minute. Well, sometimes you've just got to try and conquer your fear of heights. Walk out proudly and say, I'm not scared, which is what I'm doing now. And it's not that much of a drop anyway. And the other day I went up to the Maha Nakhon Tower. But I tell you what, that's a completely different matter altogether. When you walk on that glass uh, walkway and you look down, that is bloody scary. And uh, I couldn't do that. Anyway. I've conquered some of my fear of heights walking across that bridge. I'm quite proud of myself. You can still see some of the old wooden houses built for railway workers when the line opened in 1903 across the road here and they're still being lived in and will probably survive right up until the very last minute when the bulldozers move in. So if you're the type of urban explorer or photographer who wants to come and capture a place before it gets regenerated and redeveloped, then now is the time to come. As Depeche Mode once said, the landscape is changing. I want to clear off a bit of confusion about the names of these stations. This is Tombury Station, but it opened as Bangkok Noi in 1999 because the other Tombury Station at the end of this line that is now closed was about to close. So that opened as Bangkok Noi in 1903, but changed to Tombury in 1950 after World War II when it was bombed and then refurbished. And it was bombed by the Allies because the Japanese were using this line to take supplies up to the Death Railway. Anyway, this was changed to Tombury Station in 2003 when trains completely stopped using the other Tombury Station at the end of the line. And if that is not confusing, then uh, I don't know what is because I'm having trouble reading it all out. And I even explained it here in layman's terms. Anyway, there we are, Tombury Bangkok Noise Station.
There is one street near here, Soy 6, where all the old wooden houses are left intact. And I'm not sure if the people who live in those houses are still railway employees, because all the wooden houses were built for railway staff when the line opened in 1903. In fact, all the land around here is State Railway of Thailand land, including Surat Hospital. So we're going to walk down Soy 6. I'm not going to take any video. I'm going to take lots of photos, though. Well, I'm not quite sure if Soy 6 is on the hit list for demolition in the next few years. Wouldn't surprise me if it was, but either way, it's nice to see a few of the old original wooden structures being put to use, still being lived in, even if some of them do look like they're about to collapse at any moment. Anyway, I can smell durian mixed with fish and bananas, and that can only mean we're in Tombury Railway Market, where it's fruit and veg and meat and fish and all that kind of thing. So unless you're running a restaurant, it's not really worth visiting but we will have a quick look around anyway. This is one area I think will not be demolished at all because there's too much railway heritage history here. Just in the distance you can see the old water tower for steam engines and there is actually a steam engine parked up there. It's got 850 written on the side of it and it doesn't look in great shape but it looks like one of the steam engines they use for the excursions they do every month or so from Hualong Pong. So if any train enthusiasts are watching Tell us the origin of that steam engine. I'll post a photo of it a bit, bit closer up so you can see what it's all about. If you ever get one of these long tail boats for a canal tour, they will come up here, the Klong Bangkok Noi Canal, and then eventually go back out into the river via the Klong Bangkok Yai. Now this stretch of canal actually used to be the river until 1552 and they cut a shortcut. So there's a bit of interesting history for you. Next time you're on Mastermind, specialist subject, the Chao Pia River. Nowadays, this is about as far as the trains can go. That diesel locomotive is about 20 metres away from the very end of the track. And in the old days, of course, they continued into the old Bangkok Noi slash Tombury railway station. Here's an old photo to give you an idea of what the old station looked like and the environment around it. And occasionally you do get diesels reversing up and down here. And this will be the location of the new Sirurat railway station serving the SRT light red line trains and the MRT orange line which will be underground so it's all coming up in the future lots of redevelopment to be done around here
So no train has gone past this point since 2003 when they closed the old Tombury Railway Station or Bangkok Noi, whatever you want to call it. I'm still confused. Anyway, when they were excavating the land, they came across some artifacts from the past. One was a boat and the other was the foundations of the old palace wall of Wang Lang Palace, which was a palace built during the time of King Rama I. And they've preserved the foundations of that in the hospital. We'll have a look at that in just a minute. And it's just started raining, so I'll have to take shelter for a while before we do that. When they were excavating this land to build the new hospital building in 2003, they came across the old foundations of the war around the old Wang Lang Palace, which was built during the reign of King Rama I in the late 18th century. And this made up part of the Tonbury Wall, which would have surrounded the palace. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the old Bangkok Noi railway station building. I think it's nicely lit up at night, so we don't need to worry about it being dark. So the old Bangkok Noi railway station building now makes up part of the Sirirat Pumuksatan Museum, which I visited a couple of weeks ago for a video, you may have seen that. And that just about concludes this very quick walking video. Hopefully it will give you an idea of the kind of places we can explore and visit if you book a tour. We tend to stay off the well-trodden tourist paths, although most tours are a combination of many different places. Anyway, please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Like, share and comment. If you want to support the channel, you can do so via the Buy Me A Coffee link on the screen or in the description. That just leaves me to say thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.